Hi, I'm Helen, a comp sci major, a sophomore at NYU Shanghai. I'm doing this video presentation for my machine learning final project. The name of the project is Bag of Words meets Bag of Popcorn. It's Helen. As you may tell, this is actually from a Kaggle competition around a year ago. My task is to classify the movie reviews based on their sentiment. Each review will either be positive or negative. My data set is from IMDb. A rate of less than 5 will give rise to a negative. The data set is composed of uh, 100,000 movie reviews in all. I will present two approaches. The first one is bag of words plus logistic regression. The second one is paragraph factor with latent display allocation. I will show you more later. In the first approach, I pre-process the reviews, vectorize them using bag of words, which is quite similar to our perception assignment. I feed them into the logistic regression, and then I got a result. In addition, I did a little experiment. This is a relatively short movie review I picked. You can tell its sentiment from the very first sentence. Crafty. Okay, in the pre-process, I remove HTML, I remove non-letters, I remove stop words. Stop words basically means meaningless words. And finally, I lower the cases. Thanks to the powerful Python library, in the approach one, I coded nothing but importing. The result was fair. It's around 85%. The rest of the three accuracies are the benchmarks from that Kaggle competition. Uh, after that, I did a little experiment. Good, bad experiment, I call it. I removed the words with strong sentiments like great, nice, bad, and then did the classification again. See which word besides those words play a significant role. That is, helps the classifier to identify the sentiment the most. In the logistic regression model, as you see here, very large to overfit the training data. You can have a look at, at the full list I removed. Again, thanks to the powerful Python library. In several lines, I got the result. A rule with Hawk will be most likely labeled positive, and I was curious enough to look up and find out that Hawk means Ethan Hawk here. The word soccer ranks second. It might be that the soccer team is popular. On that person wrote, I regret not going to cinema with you to see that movie, but playing soccer instead. Anyway, then the list follows several names, several words that are not quite interesting, and vengeance, and finally Shanghai, then negative. Words like uh, stinker, obnoxious, rotten, drag, should be the words I should have removed, but I forgot, so ignore them. Then the laurel goes to Bowen Brothers and Powerful Rangers. The word furthermore is interesting for me. Furthermore is interesting because people already wasted their time watching the movie they don't like, but they are still willing to spend more time on it making complaints. The removing results in a reasonably worse performance. Okay, that's the end of the approach one. Next, paragraph factors. I will first introduce the model first. Before we dive into paragraph vectors, I should first introduce the word to vec model since it's not covered in our course. Its intuition is that it predicts the words given its context. If you look at this equation for just several seconds, word is here and the context is here. K words left and the K words right. We have a big matrix W, which each column represents, represents a word. We add a con average or concat them and feed into the classifier. The goal is to maximize the average log probability. 
max-max this stuff. The classifier is usually soft-max, and output is computed using this formula, where u and b are soft-max weights. In doc2vec or paragraph vector model, we add a new matrix D here. Each column is a paragraph vector. Now that each movie review will receive a unique paragraph vector. Again, we did the average or concat and feed into softmax. So the only difference between WaterVec and DuckTVec is that H is now constructed from both W and D. There are actually two versions of the paragraph vector model. I just described PVDM, but the other one is called PVDBAL. Its intuition is that it predicts the context given the world. I think that's all I want to explain. To summarize, in the PV model, we first train to get the words vectors and the paragraph vectors on the already seen paragraph. Then we infer the paragraph vectors for new test movie reviews. Since the model will provide two different paragraph vectors for each movie review, we will choose to use either one or we can cut them together. Last, we fill the paragraph vectors into a classifier. Then, what is LDA word vectors? Suppose we have a toy corpus that only has five words in total and we want LDA to generate three topics for us. I made up a topic one here. Let's have a look at this matrix. If you look at the blue column, it is the thing we are most familiar with, that is the probability for each word to appear in topic 1. On the other hand, if you look at it horizontally, you may find that the first zero actually represents the probability for the word 1 to appear in each topic, if we set its L1 norm to be 1. Jensen's LDA library saves the matrix for us, luckily. Using PV models to classify sentiment is not a new thing at all, so I hope to explore something new. I combined PV and LDA word vectors together by both averaging and concatenating. Let's assume that this is the PV word vector and this is LDA word vector, and uh, this is the average one and this is the concat one. Because I have to keep the dimensionality, so I applied PCA to half cut the dimensionality. Here's the code for the average one. After modifying the word vectors in the PV model, I trained the model for another five epochs. And here is the performance. The performance is kind of poor because I did not fine tune the model, but it is hopeful. Recall that since the PV model has two versions, we could use either one or concat them. So there are three baselines here. In general, the concat version works best, and the DM alone works worst. I think the LD boosted the performance a tiny little bit. The average version works better. It might be because the word vectors from PV model and LDA model capture similar aspects of the data rather than orthogonal aspects. Has the LDA vector actually help refine the PV vectors? Let us further examine the models. JSON debug doesn't train the word vectors, usually. So let's have a look at the words most similar to good and bad in DM model alone, before and after LDA step goes in. You might see that LDA in fact corrects the word bad a little bit, since it should not be similar to good and it completely, completely kicks out the good here. I visualized the word vectors before and, averaging, uh, before and after averaging LDA word vectors with PV ones. This is before, and this is after. I could not really tell the difference, actually, uh, to be honest. I think the PV model itself did quite a good job already. Here's a snippet ensuring that I did not make up the visualization on my own. Finally, let's have a look at LDA topics. Most of them are quite interpretable. Surprisingly, in only 20 passes. 
I may not elaborate here. Last thing, last further improvements. I should definitely fine tune the model. I know it. If you ask me why I didn't do it in this project, that's the answer. Besides that, I think I should train debug word vectors also, although JSON library doesn't recommend. Or I could use this doc2vec plus LDA method in other tasks. Tasks. That's all. Thanks for watching, and thanks in particular to my powerful Python libraries. <laughs>